The final quarter of the century starts off in grand fashion, with Waikato taking the Ranfurly Shield off Auckland again, and begins its longest ever Shield reign, while the Sevens team defends its national title. A year later, the Mulu men make it back to the MPC final, but lose in Dunedin. No such problem for the Sevens team, with Waikato making it a three-peat of National Sevens crowns. Come 1999, and it's the turn of the Waikato women in the inaugural Women's NPC. They are ready, having built to this moment for over three decades. As mentioned earlier, the Waikato Rugby Union formed a committee to foster female rugby in the province in 1966. That same year saw the first match played and is recounted as a very willing contest in which Kyoto would prevail 9-3 over Avengers at the Frankton Railway Ground. However, things just bubbled away for the next two decades before Frankton United entered the Auckland competition in 1985, a much needed and long overdue jolt. Three years later, Frankton United would host a mini tournament featuring Auckland clubs, while Melville hosted Putararu University and Frankton in their now quadrangular tournament. In 1992, Melville would be crowned the first ever Waikato Women's Club champions and the women's game slowly began building throughout the region. Waikato players began gaining regular selection for the national team. Lena Dean Simpson Brown, arguably the matriarch of the women's game in the province, would cap the New Zealand in the Canada Cup. That tournament was owned by Melville's Vanessa Coots. The men's game had Jonah, the women's game had Vanessa. The powerhouse wing, that's Coots, not Lomu, scored a staggering 18 tries in just three tournament games. Waikato were as keen as any province for the inaugural women's MPC to come into existence. However, the new century brought some tough times with Waikato relegated to the second tier of the domestic women's rugby in the middle of the decade and the club competition ceasing for a short period around that same time. The Waikato influence in the Black Ferns remained strong, but after a shock exit in the 2014 Rugby World Cup to Ireland, there was a lot of pressure on the side which headed to the 2017 tournament to reclaim its spot at the top of the women's game. The Black Ferns would make the final, defeating England in one of the games of the year. One of the standout performers on the day was Waikato loose head prop Tuka Natua. They're going to go upstairs. New Zealand are convinced they scored. Just short. No, 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 no. Didn't back her straight. Then the offloads. Natua. A second try for Natua. New Zealand in again. And on they go again. Natua looking for a hat trick. Natua for a hat trick. A hat trick in a World Cup final. Her performances at the tournament, capped off by that hat-trick, would see Tukunatua claim the Supreme Award at the 2017 Brian Perry Waikato Regional Sports Awards. And it's not just the 15-a-side game where Waikato Wahine have excelled on the world stage, with Stacey Flula a strong contributor to New Zealand's gold medal winning sevens team at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Waikato had never won a national title but came so desperately close to lifting the Farah Palmer Cup in 2020. This time, Ponsonby is turned in the tackle. Nellis, has she got the ball over? Yes, she has! Waikato were on track to have another good crack at the Farah Palmer Cup. That's before old mate COVID reared its Delta variant head again. But don't worry, when it's time to return to the field, Waikato will be ready, because our wahine have always been ready. The new millennium begins with a couple of goodbyes. After a record 21 defences, the Ranfurly Shield departs the province after a near three season stay, while we bid adieu to Rugby Park in its grand old form, with the construction of Waikato Stadium beginning. Waikato play at Seddon Park in 2001, with the stadium open for business in 2002. The new venue would play host to the MPC final that year, however Auckland would spoil the party by winning the decider. A year later is significant, as it's the last year in which Waikato face international opposition. 
They beat Italy 23-3 in a game which features the debut of a young 18-year-old phenom out of Rotorua Boys High School, Liam Messam. The British and Irish Lions would tour in 2005, and while Waikato didn't get a crack at them, Waikato Stadium hosted one of the moments of the tour. Led by Waikato loose forward John O'Gibbs, the Māori All Blacks would score a famous victory with several Mulu men to the fore. In 2005, Waikato Centurion Warren Gatland would return from overseas to coach the side. The former hooker had established himself as a world-class coach through stints with Ireland and English club Wasps. When 2006 rolled round, Gatland had assembled a strong squad laced with skill, endurance, toughness and craft. But was it a championship calibre team? Everybody is ready and uh, Piri Wefu gets the 2006 final underway and it didn't go the 10 metres but it's been claimed by Waikato anyway. The throw again as it's taken down this time by Bates and here comes Waikato again. Two thousand and seven saw the Ranfurly Shield won by a record fifty-two to seven margin over Harbour. Six days later, the Shield is heading south to Canterbury. The new decade starts with a fourth national men's sevens title, while Waikato would make the NPC final in twenty ten and twenty eleven, losing to Canterbury both times. Waikato Stadium would also host three games in the 2011 Rugby World Cup, including the All Blacks pool match against Japan. The 9th and 10th Ranfurly Shield tenures would be in 2012 and 2015, the same year the Sevens claimed a fifth title. The men's 15s team would battle, and those struggles were very real heading into the 2018 season. Samasoni sets for Stratton. Inside pass, Quinton Fire again through. Has Severis on the outside. Severis. <laughs> Taken down by McQuaddle. Whipped across. That is a beautiful ball to Tupaya. Wow, we. Numbers wide. Oh, Another great inside. ball from Smith. Inside to Tupaya. Tupaya. Sweeney, Sweeney with the dummy, Sweeney's over! Jacobson is there quickly, the ball needs to be shifted, it comes to the right, now they need to move it to the left, that's where it goes, Smith, quick hands to Tucker, Grease is there, he gets it out to Lonsdale, one more pass, to Kyle, Smith, one of the great tries of 2018! <laughs> it's all I get over there to play, the Taranaki team are out on their feet. That's the siren, they'll kick it out! Waikato in possession, Takanagi kicks it to the stands! And the 114-year-old Ram Furley Shield belongs to Waikato!
2018 would see yet another men's sevens title added, and 12 months later, it was Waikato lifting the trophy for the eighth time. And in 2020, as previously seen, the Waikato women came within a whisker of claiming the Farah Palmer Cup for the first time. However, the post-match comments of Captain Chelsea Alley epitomised not only the attitude of that outstanding group of women, but the unwavering attitude of Waikato teams over the last century. There was a lot of belief in our team and, um, yeah, we gave it all, as you can see. Um, Canterbury are a bloody classy side, um, so, yeah, they need to be really proud, but I'm just so proud of my girls for the season we've had. And um, we're not broken yet, we'll be back next year, um, bigger and better than ever. Which leads us to 2021, the centenary year of the Waikato Rugby Union. How did it go? Brilliantly. It's well organised from Waikato, still moving, still moving. And over the line, the crash over is the big out, yes it is. Try for Waikato, they go ahead of the final. Coming back strongly now, although that's a loose pass and it's picked up by Phelan Sullivan. And he'll go all the way. Just when Tasman looked to be taking control, Waikato straight back through Phelan Sullivan. Six into turn the screws. Two Canterbury locks in the bin and away goes. And there's all the back up to the post and off the deal. She has been trialless. She has led and now Victoria Edmonds has extended the lead for Waikato. Oh, I've done it again. They work down the short side. Hoare here for Tyra. Can you find the corner? Box here's the corner. He's going to scoot it under the post. She slipped her way. Has hardly gone her way. The young winger all game, but she stayed in it when she needed to for the first time in their history. Waikato have won the Farah Palmer Cup. They come from 13-3 down without their biggest names. Their Success. Brand Burley Shields, a factory of All Blacks. 100 years of celebrations, and now, again, your NPC champions. As you can see, the women's game in the region continues to go from strength to strength because whenever an opportunity arises, our rugby wahine have and always will be ready.